Born and raised in rural Chipinge, he moved to the city, uneducated with nowhere to live. He slept on a church bench for three months. Eventually, he was forced to live in someone's car. After this, he was working as a gardener for two years. In spite of these hardships, he never looked back. He looked to God for his turnaround. I am Tani, your host, and welcome to The Tani Show. And now we welcome our guest, Aaron Chikukuza. Hello, Aaron. How are you? How are you? Please take a seat. Thank you so much. Take a seat. It's great having you. It's a great opportunity to be here as well. Awesome. I have, I have just read what has happened, the transformation that has happened in your life. Can you believe that's your story? Yes, I believe. You know, being a Christian entrepreneur, belief is a must. I yeah. do believe that. But like, if we look maybe 10 years back, could you see what is happening now? Was it clear? 10 years back, yes, I knew my life would change, but not to this magnitude. Oh, wow. So it's beyond my expectations. Mm, yeah. God has done more and abundantly above what you could imagine. Yes, yes. Oh, my goodness. Take us through the journey of Aaron before that transformation, you know, being the gardener, coming. You came from the rural areas. You are now in town. How was that experience? Thank you very much. To clear all the breeze, uh, I'm the firstborn in a family of four. Two boys, two girls, which to me is a tribute of gender balance. I was born in Jipinge, which is uh, part of Manikaland province in Zimbabwe here in Zimbabwe. And I finished my all levels in 2003. And um, as they would say, you would go to the capital city to look for greener pastures. Yeah. You know, or to seek employment. But I've always wanted to be a business person growing up. So you knew, you didn't know what business, you yeah. just knew. Yeah, I just knew the one you, day. You're going to be an I'll entrepreneur. I would be something. Okay. And uh, I also grew up in church. Okay. Where I was born in church and grew up participating in the activities of church. So when I came to Harare 2004 in April, I started doing carpentry. Because most of my uncles do carpentry work. Okay. Part of construction. Then around 2005, during Maramba China, which is the cleanup exercise in Harare, initiated by the government, cleaning up the mess. For example, many landlords in Harare had built uh, unapproved Houses. cottages I to earn that. more money. So yeah. unfortunately or fortunately, I was also staying with my other uncle in one of the cottages in Mavuku. And uh, we were also affected. The only option for me was to go back to the rural area. So you lost your house. Yes, we lost our house. And my uncles found their way to a safer haven. And the clear on call from other relatives was for me to go Kumbusha, to go back to, to the rural area. Home. But with my intuition and my conscience, I said, no, it's not the time. You know, being the firstborn, your mother will be looking forward to, to you. And my father actually passed on to the year 2000. And my siblings were back then. So I stayed in a, the landlord's car for two weeks in Mavuku. You were living in a car? Yes. Sleeping in a car? Yes. And where would you shower? I would shower in the landlord's bathroom. I would talk to ah. him and then shower there. At that time, I didn't have much belongings. So, so it, it was, was easy. Just, it was just, just a small bag. And... Yeah. Oh. Then until I found a better place to stay with my other uncle, Bozzi, my mother's family is so extended. So I have several uncles in Harare. Okay. Yeah. Then things were even worse. And around 2007, I found myself to be a garden boy in Highlands, Harare. Okay. Yeah. And it was connected, though, with uh, some artistic nature ability that I had imbibed, where we were making some souvenirs, miniature mm -hmm. visions for tourist attractions, like, uh, for example, the tourist the Victoria Falls. Yeah. 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 The so we we're making those souvenirs to be able to 
sell to tourists in Victoria Falls so that when they visit Zimbabwe, they go back with something of a similar mm. nature, mm. which was beyond pictures and videos. So I became a garden boy then. I, I even never knew I would become a garden boy one day. So how did that make you feel? At that time, there was no problem to me. Okay. It was, it was, it was just, it was the journey. It was a job. Yes. You, you were okay. Which was leading me to something better. To the next thing. So I knew it's just a passing phase. Okay. Because uh, even the children of Israel had to pass through the wilderness, wow. to the promised land. So I knew one day things will work out. Wow. So for two years, I was a gardener in Highlands. And then I left and I went back to stay in Rua, where I had arrived from. And um, things were becoming more worse and worse and worse. And I, at one time, I became a painter. Because many of my uncles are carpenters. So I wanted to have that distinction. Say, we can't all be carpenters. Uncles oh, so you, and you nephews. You were looking for something within? Yes. Okay. okay. So in 2012, around there, that's when I also became homeless. Again? Again, for the second time. Oh. And the Clarion call then was even louder for me to go back to the rural area. I remember at one time, my mother had to come to Harare when she had that your son is in, in bed shape in Harare. So where were you staying at this stage now? At that stage, I was renting at a one-roomed house, if I may okay. say. Okay. Which was near the church that I slept in. Because that church, they allow people to pray, no matter which denomination you go to. Anytime, you can just open the back door and you pray. You want to cry to the Lord, to study the Bible, and you go home. So when I faced the challenge, it was, I was like on a hard place and a, and a hard rock for me to go back to Musha. So I said, no. So as if the Holy Spirit talked to me for a strategy, that's when I thought, because many people in that church, they would come to prayer around in the evening. Around 10 p.m., they would go to their homes to sleep. Okay. So I would come okay. with them. Okay. And then around 10 p.m., I would find that I'm alone now. I had a, a red jacket. Okay. I would just put it on and sleep on the bench. I did that for three months. You slept on a bench yeah. for three for months? For three months. Even the caretaker of the church didn't know that for three months. So in the wow. morning now, they also come around 4 a.m. And then in the morning, I also wake up. Amazingly, the door would bang, a loud bang. So I wake up from my, my slumber. Then the Lord did amazing things. Wow. Then, around 2015, mm. Cyclone Idai hit. You know, I'm from Jipinge. And uh, one morning, my mother called me. She was crying because all our houses were raised down by Cyclone Idai. For the second time, Aaron, you've now had your house destroyed. Yes. She was crying. But I, we thank God. I said, Mama, at least we thank God that you're alive. Yeah. I had to go there. Actually, her story was covered on the CBC TV news. Oh, In our home area, we were so much affected more than anyone else. So we had to start from all over. Oh, my God. Then with that dream of wanting to be an entrepreneur, mm. on the 19th of uh, May, 2015, I opened a WhatsApp group and had to invite some fellow church members to buy and sell She's other, and we also organized seminars where we invited several big corporates to come and exhibit okay. to support us. I will start to write some articles that will enhance their businesses, like on different topics, finance, human resources, strategy, selling, and stuff like that. Then in 2017, we discussed how we can scale up the WhatsApp group. By the way, that WhatsApp group. Mm -hmm. With the vision of having a grand vision, that WhatsApp group, we had uh, some WhatsApp groups for China. Okay. Botswana. It was like an in yes, international. Yes, want to link our members to do business easily. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So, 2017, we thought, how can we scale up? So, one of the members said, can we do radio advertising? Okay. But before we get more okay. into your business side, I want to touch on the business side because we have this journey you've taken us through of everything going on. 
now you own an amazing business, or should I say businesses? So I want you to tell us what happened and how that turnaround came. But before you answer us, we're going to take a commercial break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Aaron, I had just asked you to take us through the change. We've heard the past. We want to know what caused that flip for you. It's amazing what the Lord has done because I owe this to God himself. It's not because I was so good in innovation and in creativity, but it's purely God. So when we were doing that, uh, the radio advertising. You know, when you're in a dry patch, usually, I was uh, a young man, and to, you, you know, it's a challenge for even to propose to a church member or a lady that you think you're interested into. Was one thing you know next to this. I want my hair done. I want lunch and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Yet you know you don't have money. <laughs> you don't even have that. to go oh. home from town or there's no food in the house. But sometimes I was not paying for six months. So at that time, I, when we started radio advertising, then I got a certain lady who is now my wife. Her name is Pretty. Oh, wow. <laughs> so she loved me when I was in the wilderness, oh, which I thank beautiful. God for, for her. So incidentally, she was doing her course at Harare Poly professional cookery course. Okay. And uh, they don't do much about baking in that portfolio. So she told me she wanted to do much about baking as well because she wanted to be a chef. Okay. At the same time, one of my clients who were advertising on radio is what we call Radio Classifieds has a baking school. So I had to bridge a better kind of a deal. So I told the owner of the school, say, can my girlfriend do her baking course while well, at least you don't pay to radio for the meantime. So he agreed. Okay. So okay. after her police around 2 p.m., she go to the baking school. Oh, wow. Now, that was the genesis of the transformation, which was near, if I can say. Because my mind now was thinking, if the Lord allows that we marry each other, how am I going to capitalize on her baking skill? Oh, wow. That's where everything started. Wow, that's so, so subconsciously beautiful. and consciously, my mind was playing now. So how am I going to, you know, sometimes it's risky to, to educate your lady before you marry her because she might be snatched by someone. But I had to do it because my conscience told me she was mine. <laughs> and at this point, it's like you were focusing on her growth more than you were focusing with dealing with, you know, yes. Even yourself. My father-in-law right now doesn't know that. I did oh, wow. that under the, the carpet. So wow. one day, one morning, I went to a supermarket. But well, at that time, we were sharing an office now with someone. I, went, I wanted to buy buns for my breakfast. As if it was my first time to look at the ovens, at the baker section. But that day, there was a flash in my spirit. I looked at the ovens. I saw there were big ovens. I said, then I discovered three problems in the baking industry. I said, we don't have smaller ovens in the market that people can buy affordably. Number two, we don't have ovens that use traditional sources of energy, like cow dung or okay. traditional source of energy like charcoal and firewood. The third one was, I've discovered that bread and confectionery is usually transported from the capital city to other parts of the country. Mm. So the mm. bread that they ate this morning today maybe came, from came two days ago. Oh. Yet we say hot buns, hot bread. So those three problems, you know, by the way, I even left buying the buns because I saw an opportunity. You know, being a Christian, you know, when God talks to you, talks to you say, mm. wow, this mm. is it. I rushed back to the office. I called my girlfriend said, Baby, you know what? I have an idea. Because I was thinking, how am I going to capitalize on a baking school, baking skill? 
And boom, I had Something an idea. Something came. Wow. So I knew we had to have an orphan here. I did my research. One of them was, I went to the school where she was doing baking. I told the owner, he said, it's doable. The problem then was, I didn't have money to make uh, the prototype. Uh, you had the idea. I had the idea. You had the idea. But you know, an idea is so powerful. If you have an idea, you can go. If you have an idea, you can have. Yeah. If you have an idea, you have everything. Especially if you have proper guidance to translate it from the celestial realm to the terrestrial realm. So doing radio at that time, I, th I knew where to advertise it. So my story sometimes seems unprofessional because what we did then, after having uh, made some costing of our one prototype of the ovens, I had it in my diary. I drew it in my diary. And you know what I did? I went to radio without a symbol. Because if there's something that I have that God has blessed me, is wow. the confidence in him. Mm. You know, I believe entrepreneurship is something more than guts. Yeah, so it I, is. I went to radio. Taking. It's, yes, it's... I went to radio, National FM radio. I said, today we are also advertising this. And by that time, we were calling it Artis Bakery. It was, I'm Aaron. My wife is pretty. So there's you a prefix artists. of my name and suffix of my, my girlfriend then, who's my wife now. So, you know, on radio, the phone was on silent. The moment I explained the oven, which is totally new in the market, my phone was freezing. Calls, texts, and WhatsApp messages. And you don't have the product yet? I don't have a product yet. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> which is, to me, step on faith. Yeah, yeah. Aaron, I can tell you are such a man of faith. I Thank can you. tell in your whole journey, there's so much faith. Because the things you've gone through, others... They give up, especially on their faith. They say, God, I'm praying. God, I'm putting my faith. Why is there no turnaround? But I can tell you still hold, you still hold on so much. And I want to know what has caused that stubborn faith in you. But before you answer us, we'll be right back. Welcome back. So before our break, you were sharing how you advertised without the product. How did you get the product? Thank you very much. You know, at least that was the first confirmation for me that a potential people, clients, they want it. Now from there, I was praying, say, Lord, can you provide the finances for me to make the prototype? So among the people who were calling, one of them Two of them, rather, became angel customers. They trusted me wow. to pay full amounts Before. for the oven that is not available. Wow. But they said, you just, we just trust you. Wow. So I had two payments without the symbol. I had to subcontract someone to make the symbol. And by the way, we even went to do the training to the first client without testing the oven. But the time was so short. But still, I knew within me you that it knew. would work. You have stubborn faith. We went for training. It, bread came out nicely. Wow. I just made my small prayer say, Lord, thank, thank you very you. much. Wow. And the story today has changed. At that time, that was a charcoal oven. Now we have a gas oven. Wow. Very soon, we're moving into a biogas oven. Wow. The story has automatically changed. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And I see there's a change in name now yes. in the company. How, how did you now get the new name? Wow. You know, Coming from Manikaland, where there's Ngoda. And three weeks later, after we said Artist Bakery, I knew the name was not doing well within my system. Okay. So we brainstormed with my girlfriend. And as we were talking, talking, she said Ngoda. I said, that's it. That's it. And we trademarked it. Everywhere oh, wow. we go, Ngoda, Ngoda, Ngoda. Wow. So it is a house and name right now. Wow. What a story. Thank you. What a story. Oh, God. Like, I, I have goosebumps. <laughs> I have goosebumps because I, I took myself through the journey. I took myself through the rural boy who's now in town and everything you had to go through. And it's an amazing story of faith. Where are you now business-wise? Just tell us where you are as a business now. Right now, where we are, we have progressed. We continue innovating. Okay. Because, you know... 
uh, I've met many engineers who say, you are the founder of Godoven. Which degree or level of engineering have you done? I tell them, I have been engineered by God. I was taught wow. engineering by God. Wow. Even though we have a team of experts as well that we help to, uh, to make sure our dreams come to pass. So if that happens, uh, we make sure uh, everything that we do right now, we have a plan. Like we said, the progression from the charcoal oven into the LP gas oven, into the biogas oven, we want to capitalize on waste management and have free gas to bake or to cook. Wow. Also working together in the things of climate change and stuff like that. So we are very uh, much ahead on our plan. Wow, congratulations. Thank you so much. With your journey and what you have allowed God to do through you. And I can see that God doesn't elevate the qualified. He's, he, oh, he's a God of favor. There's yes. so much favor on your life. Because yes, sure. you're not even, you're not qualified to be an engineer. And people are even asking you, are you educated? And you're not. But still, God has favored you in that area. Sure. Wow. May God continue to bless you and you so just much. keep increasing you Thank in you. what you're doing. And you have such an amazing story. Thank you. Wow. You have such an amazing story. Thank you so much Must for coming on the show. Thank you. You have heard it from Aaron himself. He says, give your life to Jesus Christ because once you are confident in he who has started this thing that he can perfect it and finish it until the day of our coming of our Lord Jesus Christ it gives you that stubborn faith it gives you a pillar to know that you are not walking alone but the great one is walking with you if you have not received Jesus Christ I am inviting you to do so now, wherever you are, maybe you're in the wilderness, maybe you have given up because things don't seem to change. I promise you, there's a change for you. You can repeat this prayer after me. Oh Lord God, I believe in my heart, in Jesus Christ, that he died for me. I confess with my mouth that he is the Lord of my life. In him and through him, I receive eternal life. I am now a child of God. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Amen. Congratulations if you have just said that prayer. I want to tell you that Jesus Christ is your strength, your boldness, and you can put all your faith in him. Thank you so much. That is it on today's episode and God bless you.